welcome to my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed that clip of my first at home practice. Um, I am working to be able to do this on my own in my home. I have some great props that I have um, accumulated and I wanna make use of them. And I also don't want to only practice and feel limited by the studios available to me or the time of classes available to me right now. Um, so I do want to expand my practice and being able to work from home with yoga, but I'm getting there. That was a really slow practice. Um, obviously I sped it up, but it was only about um, 20 to 25 minutes in length. And I feel like I really don't know how to guide myself yet. I'm not super comfortable. Um, I watch YouTube videos of yoga, or I'm starting to, and Yoga with Adrienne is one of them that I've you know, play, paid close attention to that was recommended by one of my friends, Jacqueline. So I'm working with some of those videos and just kind of pulling bits and pieces out of them that I feel I need for my body at this time. So a little bit of backstory about me. Most of you guys know most of my backstory at this point, but for some of my new ones or for some of the people who may have searched this for YouTube through yoga and you came across this like meatheady person trying to do yoga, which I do yoga, don't get me wrong. Um, you, everybody can do yoga. It's not a matter of trying to do it. Um, but you're probably just like, hmm, this is a little odd. This is a little interesting. But yeah, so I'm working through yoga and I just wanted to share with you guys what yoga has done for me um, and why I turned to it. Last year, about August of last year, I had to end a 25 week prep that pretty much had been going nowhere for about 15 weeks. Like 10 weeks in, I had some momentum. It was still slow, but it was very little momentum. And then I just kind of kept pushing for another 10 weeks. Things were a bit, there was some poor communication um, between my coach and myself and my grandfather passed during that time. He had some loved ones pass during that time. And it was just, all signs were pointing to my body saying that no like prep needed to stop um, i needed to learn how to bring myself into a reverse diet and i needed to get my body healthy and at a time where i felt like i was pushing and pushing and pushing and i had lost so much control over my body because my hormones were taking the front seat and i no longer could drive I had to gain control again and I found the beauty in yoga and being able to gain control of my body and feel in control of my body on a mat. And that has done wonders for me um, emotionally. Like there's not a day that I don't sit on my mat that I don't end up in tears in Savasana, but they're good tears. Like they're incredible tears. I can't, I really like this video has been hard for me to, to conjugate like, conjure up because I can't I can't put into words truly what yoga has done for me. I had no idea what it would open up for my body. I had no idea what it would open up my mind to and what I would experience. And uh, luckily I found a wonderful studio here called Exhale Yoga. Um, so if you guys are local to Louisville or if you're visiting Louisville ever, like please come to the studio. The energy is phenomenal. The energy is welcoming. It's soothing. It's comforting. It, it very much so feels like home. It's, I, don't, I, want, I don't wanna say what it's not. I only wanna say what it is. And what it is for me is a healing place, um, a, a welcoming space, and a space of comfort. And for me to really feel grounded in my yoga practice and continue to want to do it. I think that's the problem is I associated before yoga with like um, an intense workout, like a heated practice or a socialization situation where a bunch of my friends were going like, I wanna go do yoga. Like this was the first time I did it exclusively for me and my body. And I think that's what made all the difference. And so emotionally it's just filled a void for me that I don't think anything in my life would have provided other than yoga at this time. And like that is the most incredible thing that I can translate to you guys. And I can't, I can't say enough about it and yet it's the most indescribable thing in my life right now. That's the emotional aspect of where yoga came into play in my life. And um, this is where I'm probably gonna get a little emotional, so bear with me here. From a physiological aspect, I had no idea how much yoga would progress me physiologically. What had happened in a deficit, in a long-term deficit, with no progress and hormone distress, cortisol levels were increased. Um, my thyroid was slightly downregulated, not as 
downregulated as I expected. But either way, those were all signs because my sympathetic nervous system was in overdrive. So basically that fight or flight system in your body that ignites to get your body to respond and get your body to respond to stressors and kind of stay in this stressed environment, that is where my body constantly was. It was never being able to understand and let kick in the parasympathetic system. So the parasympathetic system allows you to relax, recover, de-stress, and it's the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight. Let me see if I can like put this into uh, layman's terms here. I just, I don't want this to feel like overly sciencey by any means, because um, I want you guys to understand like how much it allowed my body to decompress, to de-stress, and to allow for space. Um, everything in my body was wound up. It was so tight, including my muscles, including my joints, including just my whole attitude. I was just wound up, I was tight, I was, I was stuck. And I was just in this like rut. And I was emotionally letting this out. I was physically letting this out. And um, I first saw restorative yoga as being a healing tool for myself. It also was because I, I can't necessarily do a lot of high intensity yoga right now. I can't do a lot of vinyasa based yoga at this point because that is a, still a hard workout. Like you're still sweating, you're still moving for 60 minutes and you're utilizing your body in ways in which you typically don't in the gym for a full 60 minutes. So the full vinyasa classes still for me are a challenge, but I sought after restorative or yin based yoga you guys are having any of these responses in your life or any of these stresses in your life and you are a serious athlete in the gym please 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 research and understand and find the ability to get into a yin or restorative yoga class i can't express to you how important it is it gets into your deep connective tissue it makes you feel like a warm blanket is over your body and you're recovering on that mat like right then and there you can feel your body healing it's 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 beyond like the like realm that i can just say like you're instantly healing and instantly recovered but like you are you sleep better your digestive system is better. I mean, the digestive system improvement, but improvement benefits from your body twisting and moving and mobilizing food and movement. Like it helps, I promise, I promise. Maybe TMI, but I promise. So it's also allowed my body to recover at such a rate that is pretty alarming. On paper, I've been able to increase my intake almost a thousand calories, guys. Like in a short amount of time i've been able to reverse out of this now granted the coach i have now jason theobald is phenomenal he knows he knew exactly how to correct my hormones and balance out my hormones and he's done a wonderful job with that but we both have talked about how the benefits of yoga and restorative yoga and yin yoga have exceeded what he's been able to do to my body so it's like they two went hand in hand and the ability for the parasympathetic nervous system to be active during a restorative in yin yoga class has only helped further the protocols that he's placed on my body. To kind of circle back here, because I'm sorry I'm trying to be, I'm trying to explain this, but I feel like I don't want to talk in circles because I'm so excited to share with this with you guys finally. But the connective tissue that you get into in a yin class is because most of the poses are not fast you're literally holding a particular pose for three up to five minutes. It just depends on the nature of the instructor, the nature of the class. We typically use bolsters or blankets. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen bolsters. I'll put a picture of a yoga bolster here um, or a blanket. You can typically roll. So invest in yourself some beautiful blocks. This one's from Lululemon. It's part of their like new marble collection that they have. You place these in positions to release tension, to open up yourself a little bit more to assist. The goal in yin or slash restorative is to assist your body to move and then find comfort and relief in that position, to not push past that place of comfort and relief. So in a vinyasa class, your goal is to challenge yourself, to you know, fall out of a pose. For example, when I'm practicing dancer, when I practice dancer, um, I fall forward because I'm pushing my body beyond 
what it's truly somewhat capable of and that resistance and pressure causes because of the movement and the gravity it causes me to fall forward and so restorative isn't about falling out of poses like that's a success uh, success feature of vinyasa but restorative is meant to find grounding in poses comfort in poses and push yourself to that point of relaxation so you use the so it might at first when you get into a position say you're just going into a forward fold lying on the ground at first it's a little discomfort but as you breathe through it you start to relax in that position and that's why you spend so much time in those positions with yin or vinyasa or excuse me yin or restorative to circle back here i know from the bottom of my heart that yoga has touched this meat-held soul like to the core and i can attribute yoga to making this feel better and to making me feel better and to making my body feel better i don't have my blood work done yet i'm like so beyond hopeful and i'm almost certain that everything is better and i'm almost certain that i can attribute that to Jason and his amazing control of my hormones and the situation that was at play and restorative slash in yoga and the environment that Exhale Yoga Global has provided to me. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, I am a meathead slash a yogi obsessed individual and I'm beginning to practice on my own in my home. And if you guys practice yoga or have practiced yoga, you understand the challenges that that are associated with at home practice. It's a sense of focus. It's being able to lead yourself in positions. So I'm trying to get there. I, I take each class with an intention of trying to memorize a sequence or memorize a pattern that felt good to my body so then I can translate that back at home on my mat at any time when I feel I need to come back to it. You guys have been asking what I've done and what I've helped my body to get better and to heal. And like, this is the huge component of it. This is where I feel I've done the most work for my body that I could have ever done. And I had no idea it was gonna have this effect on me. So I'm going to go work out with Alex and I have two wonderful humans, Alex and Leah, who have brought yoga into my life. I have Jess Santos who um, has shared her yoga story with me many times. Hearing her yoga story has made me feel comfortable sharing my yoga story with you guys and i can't wait for this year and i can't wait to continue practicing and this will forever be part of my prep i will never not do yoga during prep because i think that that is going to be what helps me the most in my future as an athlete and i'm gonna go work out with alex and i'm going to show you guys my pre-workout you may have already seen it on my instagram but everybody's been asking about pre-workout and i just want to show you that before i close out this clip let's go eat <laughs> This is one of a one of my higher carb meals. So you will see me taking a GDA Max. This is from um, New Ethic, which is one of Jason Theobald's supplement companies. And the GDA Max helps, this is a glucose disposal agent. So it basically helps assimilate your carbohydrates. And speaking of assimilation, that is why I have this particular meal set up. Rice cakes, rice in general, is a quick digesting, quick absorbing, carbohydrate it, the energy is released quickly and the jelly which is the pollinar all fruit jelly is also a quick release carbohydrate because its ingredients are really basic juice concentrates from both pear grape pineapple berries water fruit pectin citric acid and natural flavor so basically there is hardly any added additives other than fructose here so straight sugar from fruit also is a fast digesting 
carbohydrate, fast absorbing carbohydrate. It's gonna be readily available energy for me to use during my training. I typically eat this meal between, I would say 60 to 90 minutes prior to a workout. I try not to exceed this meal beyond 90 minutes because then I don't feel like I utilize the nutrients from this particular meal. So the training window is really important. I feel like the peri-workout window in general is super important. So maybe in one of the coming videos, I'll talk about my post-workout routine, but basically it's the goal with post-workout foods as well. It's also going to be fast digesting, fast absorbing nutrients and assimilation. So the same goes to, for those carbohydrates there. Now I do have fats in this workout window, but I try to aim between five to seven grams of fats and have my higher fat meals outside of my training window. Fats do slow down the rate of digestion slightly, so that's why it's good to have a little fats in there so you get a good pump, same with the salt. Um, that's why you'll notice I put sea salt on there, but you also want just a little bit of protein, but you don't wanna go over that protein threshold and fat threshold because Again, those slow down the rate of digestion. It's 10 grams of whey protein mixed with 10 grams of almond butter. And that is this meal. So I'm gonna close out this vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed that little chat chat with me about yoga. I really hope that I got my point across. That's like the biggest thing I wanna hope and reach, you know, close out this video with is that if I conveyed to you all how much yoga and practicing yoga has changed my body from a physiological aspect and from an emotional and mental aspect of this process. Um, it's been a hard thought um, to wrap around my mind of a potential prep. Um, I'm a little bit scared of the P word, <laughs> as I like to call it. Um, I'm a little gun shy. I don't want to go through what I went through last year. And I just don't want to push my body and increase its dieting years if there's really no need to. So. I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna continue making sure that my body is fully functioning and healing and that I am activating my parasympathetic nervous system on a regular basis to allow my body to relax and recover. I know you guys were probably like thinking like, oh, what supplement am I taking? What have I done? And it's really just about rest and recovery and relaxation. And I can't stress that enough. Like there wasn't a magic pill or a magic thing other than yoga and the workings of a wonderful coach to figure all this out and like that's it it wasn't just this magic like hey i'm gonna take a bunch of this stuff i'm gonna do this i changed my training slightly but not really i dropped my cardio but i'm still doing cardio and cardio is good it helps with a host of other things that are related to healing your body especially steady state cardio and uh, I mean, go over go over to Lauren Conlon's channel and watch watch her video on t her purpose behind 10 minute walks. Like she walks all the time for just 10 minutes after almost every meal. Like steady state cardio is great for you. Cardio is not bad. Like somehow in this fitness world, it's like, oh, I don't do hardly any cardio and that's like a glorified thing. Well, no, it shouldn't be glorified. First off, no particular person's training or style of training or style of cardio or somebody's intake should ever be glorified. This is all an individual process. So stick to your individuality. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Love you all. <laughs> Love you all and bye-bye.